Hello, my name is Kirk Carlson. I'm here to share my value creation tip of the week. And today I want to talk about a really important topic that can make a big difference uh, for you. Um, and it's called the value proposition. So um, it's, uh, we consider this to be one of the most fundamental ideas in value creation and innovation. Uh, the value creation uh, process basically starts uh, with your value proposition. And I want to go through uh, that with you and give you some hints about um, how you can use it in your activities. I worked for RCA in the first part of my career and that was bought by GE. And eventually um, the labs that I was at, uh, the Sarnoff Corporation was bought by SRI International. My, um, my, my great friend, Norm Wynarski, came in the day this happened and he told me, and I asked him, what does the technical staff think about this? And he said, they think it's gonna be great. And I said, well, that's terrific. But Norman, um, in the past, they gave us millions of dollars to spend and we're pretty good at that. <laughs> but now I think they expect us to earn millions of dollars a year and that's going to be different. And at that point, Norman uh, said, well, Kurt, it's like uh, everything else we've done, we just need to learn. Uh, and that made us realize uh, that um, we could do it if we, if we learned aggressively, which we did. And that because innovation, value creation, value creation is the process of creating innovations. It's really a learning, searching and creating activity, improving activity. And if we learned how to do that, uh, we could master this like we've mastered other things. So that started this off. Now, you know, in a big company, they don't teach you uh, value creation. They, um, when you give presentations, you might put together 30 or 40 view graphs. Uh, you're almost evaluated by the weight <laughs> of your pile and you give a presentation for an hour. Well, in a company like SRI, that wouldn't work. Uh, we work with customers all over the world uh, and we help them develop new products and services. So um, in the beginning, people don't want to listen to your hour presentation. Uh, they basically want to know in a very short, concise way um, what you can do for them. Makes sense. Well, uh, that leads one to what, the, what is a value proposition? Um, and if you look in the literature, it's mostly this is the offering that you're going to present uh, to your customers, things like that a lot of different variations. Uh, we didn't think that was uh, complete enough to really help us. Now at the other end, they're, they're complicated systems. I mean, obviously building a business plan is pretty complicated or a venture plan with you know, 15, 16 or 20 different parts. Um, that wouldn't work. Uh, there are other models like the Heilmeyer criteria which were used by the Department of Defense very successfully. But there are 11 questions there, that's pretty complicated. And then there are things like the business model canvas with, I don't know, it feels like there's a hundred questions there. Those weren't what we wanted. We wanted something that captured the fundamentals and was concise enough so people could actually remember it and use it continuously. So that set us on a journey to figure that out. And we came up with the following four ingredients. The first is, what's the need? Well, that's no surprise. Uh, without a need, you, you're not gonna be, uh, create value for your customers. And they come in many forms, as you know. Some from health, for example, entertainment. Uh, there's a wide spectrum, unlimited number of needs in the world. Uh, the second was the approach, uh, A. Um, and the approach for a um, medical problem might be a new medical device, for example. And um, in entertainment, it might be Disney World. So a uh, need and, and approach A. Uh, the third part is uh, the benefits per cost. Uh, benefits per cost is the definition of customer value. Uh, and it's subjective. It depends on your customer. And of course, the many different varieties of benefits and costs that you can put together. So for example, with a medical device, uh, it may prolong your life, um, that might be the benefit of it, but it may be inconvenient. It may have other side effects, may be really expensive, lots of different things, benefits and costs. Same thing with entertainment. Uh, Disney World provides great experiences. 
Um, it's a lot of fun. The kids love it. But you might have to travel by plane to get there. It's expensive. And when you get there, you might have to wait in line for a long time. Uh, lots of things can go on um, that both benefits and costs. So uh, the, the hard part is, of course, even though your opinion is very important, we know that, uh, only your customer determines the value of your idea. So and it's subjective again. Uh, if they don't like it, of course, you go away. Your product goes away. They have to, uh, you have to do something for them that they love, and they're the only deciders about whether it's good or bad. Okay, need, approach, benefits, per cost. And the last one is competition, C. Um, so the competition for a medical device might be a therapeutics. There might be a whole suite of different uh, therapies that you might pick from. Each one with benefits and costs, and you have to decide with your doctor. Um, for entertainment, uh, Disney World, there are other theme parks, there are lots of them. So you're competing with them. Uh, but there are other forms of uh, entertainment. You know, um, there are stadium events, there's uh, um, movie houses, uh, there's bingo, you know, there's lots of things. And uh, the last example uh, illustrates another point. Don't forget about the alternatives. So we often say, you know, consider glue. Uh, there are lots of different kinds of glue. So El Elmer's glue, there's lots of competition for that. But there are also alternatives. A glue is about sticking things together. It's like bonding things together. So the alternatives there are screws and nails and staples and even magnets, lots of different. So don't, don't forget that. So that's the, that's the, the our definition of our value proposition. N, A, B, benefits per cost, competition, just four parts. Now, uh, consider a couple things here. The first is, what happens if the need changes? Well, if it changes a lot, it's going to ripple through and change your approach, and it might even change who your competition is. Alternatively, let's say your competition comes along and starts competing with you directly. You might have to change your approach. You might even have to change your need. Um, and the, the beauty of these, these four questions is uh, they interact, but it's concise enough so you can actually keep interacting to figure out what the answer is without getting all tied up in the complexity of uh, some of these other models with you know, 12, 15 kind of questions you're supposed to answer. Uh, the, the point here is if you can't get the fundamentals right, uh, you can't go forward. Um, you've got to really uh, get the fundamentals right. Now, let me do this little test with you. Um, so are these four questions fundamental? Well, what happens if you take the need away? Well, <laughs> okay. Uh, take away the approach, same problem. Take away the benefits because, well, then you can't articulate the value of your idea. And of course, there's always competition, especially globally these days. You're, you're always competing with people. So you've got to be have superior benefits compared to the competition. And the same thing is you've got to quantify this. You can't say bigger, better, faster, cheaper. We don't know what that means. We, we want you to really be very specific and, and be as quantitative as you can about, OK, if it's faster, is it 5% or is it 100%? 5% might not matter. 100% may change the game. Who knows? So you've got to do that. Now, I want to share with you now the biggest mistake we see almost every time. This is it. <laughs> it's called a big A, a big A. Um, the person comes in and they're in love with their idea. All they want to do is talk about their idea. And this is almost a disease. So when I was CEO of SRI, when, before we uh, got people to think this way, uh, people would come in and say, Kurt, I need three hours of your time. Give me, give me three hours. I've got, I, it's, my idea is so brilliant and it's, it's so complicated. I need three hours to tell you about it. Um, the need, don't worry about that. It's huge. The benefits, tremendous, and there's no competition. Kurt, you have three hours. Okay, now as a CEO, you don't want to say no to an enthusiastic person. Uh, if you do, they're, they're not going to blame themselves. They're going to blame you because they're going to say you don't get it, right? Um, and that's what happens a lot. So uh, the alternative is to explain to them, which we did, uh, you have to start by answering these four questions. And you typically would say, you explain it to them and say, um, come back 
uh, answer these four questions. Do the best you can. I mean, you're going to be guessing about some of this. That's okay. Uh, write down the best you uh, best estimate, and you can go back. Is over time, we'll we'll refine our estimate. And if there are numbers we've kind of made up too much, we'll focus on them and we'll we'll make them real. That's that's it. And oftentimes, because you know, I work with very passionate, uh, committed people. They were very impatient. So to show that I could be impatient too, which I am about this, I often would say, come back tomorrow morning at seven o'clock. That's my first appointment. And I'd have them come back and I'd take them through it one more time. Then I'd ask them to go to our value creation uh, workshop so they could learn more about to do this and, um, and uh, start the iteration process. Um, I'd ask them if they have a buddy. Uh, having an iteration buddy is really important. I'd ask them to look on the web, talk to their friends, you know, gather all the information they could by being very aggressive about taking their value proposition, putting it in front of people and trying to make it better, more quantitative, more specific. Um, you might wonder, you know, just four questions, but how hard can this be? Well, I want to tell you, it's really, really hard. <laughs> um, I've done hundreds of these. Um, the people at SRI did hundreds of these, obviously, all the time. And I never got one right the first time, the 10th time, the 30th time. Um, high definition television, uh, which I worked on with my buddy Glenn Reitmeyer, uh, we did, we iterated that one hundreds and hundreds of times. And we not only had the technical problems, we had the, the business problems, we had the competitive problems, and we had the government to somehow convince um, to go in a certain direction. So we had, to, we had to keep on refining our estimates of those because um, it was a lot to do. And we played a little game, and I recommend this game. Uh, some of you probably have played uh, throwing a ball around as a kid. You know, you're 12 years old, and you go get your buddy, and you throw the ball, he throws it back. That's the game. Well, that's a really good way to begin to start thinking about your value proposition, too. Give it to your friend. Um, they'll give you feedback. And they give it to you, do it again, back and forth, back and forth. You want to keep on reframing the value proposition so you clarify the elements and begin to understand exactly what you know and what you don't know because that's where you have to do the homework. So uh, that's what we did. I had transformed SRI. We went from failing for 20 years to being one of the most productive research labs in the world with high definition television and Siri and a, a lot of other things we do. So that's my um, tip for today. Um, um, in your value creation activities, um, I'd recommend you start using NABCs, uh, the most fundamental questions um, that you can answer. Um, it's not the whole story, but it sets you in a direction. And if you can't answer those four questions, uh, you've got a problem uh, because you may be heading off in the wrong direction. But if you can really be specific and quantitative and really take a lot of the risk out of just those four questions, you're probably going to be going in a pretty good direction. It really does increase the chances of your success. So that's the tip for today. Um, hope to see you again. And um, remember, um, it's through innovation that we can make the world a better place. I look forward to seeing you again. Bye-bye.